at our Aspen Germany Leadership Seminar, Philosophy and Practice, um, in this beautiful venue um, this spring um, 2024. Um, and it's a great pleasure to be here with one of our participants, Paul. So before we start and dive right into the um, topic of the seminar, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do. So, uh, Paul Hennemeyer, and uh, I'm obviously an American, but I've been living in Europe for a long time. Um, I'm in the energy business, renewable energy business, and I'm a bit of a, uh, I guess, nomad before it became a, a, a popular term. So I've lived in a lot of different places, but make my home in Germany now. And you live in Munich um, and participate in some of the Aspen events, and um, you're a member, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am a member of Aspen, and uh, and uh, I come up from Mu from Munich to Berlin on occasion when I can to participate. I'm very interested in the Aspen mission, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm delighted to be here. And now you're participating in the uh, leadership seminar, yeah. philosophy and practice, yeah. um, philosophy and practice. Yeah. So what is this all about, and why um, did you make the time in your busy schedule to actually participate? Sure. Um, so um, while I was an economics major, I did do some philosophy on the side, so I've always had some interest in broadly speaking the, the topics that the philosophers have to have to tell us about. Um, and by my work, I guess whether I want it or not, I'm, I've become a leader. Um, so I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to combine the two and also to take uh, take some time out and really have an opportunity to dive into text, to think about them, and then to and, and listen to what other people are saying and see how much can be applied in my own day, my own life. Yeah. So this is a pretty international group. Um, uh, some Americans, some uh, people from Italy, um, from even Colombia, um, from Ukraine. Is there something which surprised you about the discussions about uh, leadership, concepts of humanity and so on? So I think it's great. We've got this super diverse group and um, and I think, you know, I think it's just it's great to be around um, uh, people who are giving this a lot of thought and I think everyone has got great contributions to make and as was told to us at the beginning the tough thing is not the speaking it's the listening um, and so I'm constantly working on that because I do want to come away with with lessons and ideas from the others that I might, would obviously not have picked up otherwise so so I think that's it's just the rather than a specific topic it's more a process of just listening to very thoughtful people in a setting where they can speak their minds. It's great. Don't, don't, don't get that too often. <laughs> so. um, and is there something also concrete you would take along where you think, oh, I might try that out um, when I get home yeah. or think about it at least? Yeah. Um, I think uh, there's there's many things, but I think there's one, um, well, certainly as far as the text concern, there's one particular text that focuses on not being captive by the single story, right? And I think this is a, a, a big problem for all of us. We kind of, we let our opinions define us. And as a consequence, when we hear competing narratives, we feel like personally threatened in some, some, sometimes. So I think that notion of listening to the story from multiple perspectives is super helpful and something I think will require lots of practice, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. So, do you actually have a favorite text um, in in the um, all the texts we read? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. I, uh, you know, I have to say, although it's probably, you know, I have to say just from the practical insights, even though it's a little bit has a bad reputation in some respects. I mean. Machiavelli's the the prince. I mean, you read it and you can even it was even though it was written 500 years ago, it could have been written last week. I've seen so much of this behavior in my corporate professional life that um, I think I I like it because it just comes across as unfortunately maybe so fresh, you know, and and still very relevant in a way. Yeah. Um, and my last question to you is: uh, Do you think you're going to, going to stay in contact um, with the other participants after the seminar? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, 100 percent. And uh, no, there's some great people I've met, and I, particularly because of some of the interest I've been taking um, on uh, taking in in Ukraine recently, I definitely want to also maintain close colleague a uh, close connection to the uh, Ukrainian colleagues here. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for participating. We really greatly appreciate your insights. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for hosting and thank you for inviting me. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.